you guys know that TIVA is an acronym of VITA, yeah, that doesn't make any sense, but neither does Sony sending this little beauty out to die. The PlayStation Vita was a failure. For all intents and purposes, it's a dead system thanks to terrible support from its creators who announced that they would be ceasing all production of the handheld in 2019 after quietly distancing themselves from it over the years. However, and this might come as a surprise to you, but now is probably the best time to pick up a PlayStation Vita. It shifted enough units to ensure that there will always be plenty of options on eBay for those wanting a cheap little handheld system, as well as the fact that the best PlayStation Vita games might already be sat in your library waiting for you thanks to Crossbuy, a program that allows you to download a game across multiple Sony platforms for one price. If you've been adding PlayStation Plus games to your library over the years, you may be surprised at just how many Vita games are waiting for you. Away from those titles, the Vita also certainly isn't lacking in quality games that you can't find anywhere else. Sure, they may have all come in one relatively short burst, but the PlayStation Vita's best games made full use of the handheld's power, which was above and beyond its contemporaries on the market at the time. So if you've ever been curious about Sony's Forgotten Child or just want to freshen up your handheld library, here are the best PlayStation Vita games you should check out, ranging from throwback indies to the JRPG that will consume everything within your life. Number 20, 2064, Read Only Memories. 2064 is a great example of some games just being a great fit on the Vita. A point and click title with a more than steady cult following, it pits you as a journalist who is trying to do their job in a world that seems split on technology, the pros and the cons. Hmm, bit familiar. This is all relayed through the game's spirited humour and bloody lovely pixel visuals, though it does have a few drawbacks on the Vita. While those who are after some grand challenging affair will be pretty much left wanting, 2064 excels in the small stories concerning the game's many affable characters. It's an eclectic bunch all paired wonderfully with established names in voice acting. Combine that with a good heart and some very catchy music, and you have a quaint but worthwhile time waiting for you on your Vita. Number 19, Axiom Verge. Completely unabashed about taking inspiration from Metroid, Axion Verge has become a cult favourite indie in recent years. Not just because it was the only thing close to the traditional Metroid experience before Dread came along, but also because it builds and contemporises the experience while also delivering plenty of unique mechanics and innovations of its own. Made presumably during a heavy binge on hallucinogenic drugs, Axiom Verge sees you playing as a scientist who awakens somewhere that feels entirely alien. By unlocking new abilities and even deforming the world around you, you'll get utterly lost in this LSD nightmare. That's a total dream to play on your Vita. Now, here's a question. Are fans of this game called Virgins? No? Well, they should be. They should be. Number 18, Downwell. If you haven't owned Downwell on at least one platform, you really ought to fix that as it's one of the smoothest action platformers going. You may actually be saving yourself though. It's so addictive despite being so basic on the eye that you'll be cursing frogs and gravity before too long, completely unable to make it past the first few levels. While Downwell is pretty dang tough, it retains a pick up and play appeal that's hard to resist. You effectively fall your way down through levels and kill enemies with your trusted gun boots to eventually reach the end goal with plenty of power-ups along the way. Its levels are procedurally generated and the replayability infinite, so there's a hell of a lot of bang for your buck here. Technically, too, Downwell is also really on the cheap side. Number 17, Iconoclasts. A game many, 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 many years in the making, owing to just how difficult it is to make a game when you're mostly on your lonesome, Iconoclasts feel remarkably fresh and modern despite being in the oven for so long and doffing its hat to the SNES platformers of old. Where Iconoclasts really starts to distinguish itself is in its mechanic, um, mechanic? Your protagonist Robin has use of a wrench which can be used to attack enemies but also solve puzzles, as well as many other trinkets down the line. With an intriguing and subtly dystopian storyline, as well as welcome periods of levity, Iconoclasts may be one of the last great games to ever release on the Vita. Until they inevitably release Reality Fighters 2, of course. Number 16, Shovel Knight. One of the first games to really embrace the retro revolution on modern platforms, Shovel Knight looks and plays every inch the Nintendo classic, just with a bit more welcome silliness in the fact that your protagonist has a big bloody shovel. Hey, I mean, at least nobody can say that its name is misleading as you spike downwards and dig your enemies an early grave. 
64 featuring a ton of extra content and somehow still giving back to its audience so long after its release, Shovel Knight feels completely at home on the Vita. It's a tough time, though you should come to expect that from basically any retro style platformer. So how about you dig this one up in your PlayStation Store library and lose yourself for hours on end. Number 15, Super Meat Boy. One of the most influential indie games of all time feels right at home on the Vita. It's infuriatingly tight platforming, the perfect antidote for your constipation while you're sat on the toilet. That just one more try appeal has made it a classic and comes with cross safe so you can continue anguish on the go. So why is it so low down when we're talking about the best Vita games then? It's really not the best way to experience the game, as the Vita sticks are not quite fine enough to make the inch perfect leaps you'd find on a controller quite as smooth. Still, that's something for you to acclimate to and overcome on your quest to beat the meat in what is one of the simplest but most devilishly addictive games ever made. Now, can you imagine how angry Peter would be playing this? No Vita would be safe, jeez. Number 14, Severed. You may be more familiar with Drinkbox's Severed as a Nintendo title after seeing it pop up on the 3DS, Wii U and later the Switch, but it actually began life as a Vita exclusive. As with so many games that were originally only available on the handheld however, it had to find a new home to reach the audience it deserved. Beautiful to look at and with a heart that cannot be denied, Severed pits you as a warrior lost in an unusual world. You must use the touchscreen to attack your enemies and sever their limbs, which gives the game a strange but entirely welcome vibe of Fruit Ninja meets Dead Space. A really underrated dungeon crawler from a studio who always delivers. Now go play Nobody Saves the World, it's also so dank underrated. I swear nobody played the game about nobody, ironically enough, but go give it a try, it's pretty dang good. Number 13, Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom, free. Really, the ability to pit Deadpool against Beautiful Joe from the palm of your hands should be enough to sell you on picking up Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 for your Vita, not even considering the fact that many believe it to be the best Marvel vs Capcom game on the market. Well, it's certainly better than Infinite, but that's a pretty low bar, isn't it? The gameplay transfers wonderfully to the Vita, the cell shaded visuals making everything pop just as much on the small screen as it would the big. Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 also makes good use of the Vita's touchscreen, though nothing can match the conventional controls. Whether you're a casual player or die-hard fighting game fanatic, Ultimate Marvel vs Capcom 3 should be your first point of call on the Vita as one of the best superhero games around. But please don't be a beautiful Joe too much, he's a boy. A beautiful boy. Number 12, Guaca Melee. The cult classic Metroidvania suplexed its way onto the Vita and then promptly into our hearts. While its sequel may mechanically be a better game, there's no faulting the original Guacamelee's goofy humour and downplayed but stunning visuals. Guacamelee is the perfect game for a train ride, hitting that perfect spot between being long enough to last and not so sure that it ends so soon. The perfect pick me up pretty much. There's also a lot of replayability with Guacamelee, thanks to just how damn endearing it is to play. The protagonist, one, a terribly out of shape luchador, is a likeable protagonist, but a lot of the fun from the game comes from the interactions with the hilarious bad guys and even chickens. Bursting with secrets and tidy combat, Guacamelee is yours for a pittance and worth every single penny. Number 11, Little Big Planet. Poor Little Big Planet. After initially setting the imaginations of gamers, young and old, alike when it first landed on the PlayStation 3, it eventually sort of spluttered towards relative obscurity by the time Little Big Planet 3 came around. It's a shame, because the experience is like a shot of joy straight to the heart, seen perfectly within its Vita version. Little Big Planet on the Vita, or Little Big Planet PS Vita to give it its official name, took what had made the series so charming and minimised it for a handheld. Almost boundless creativity awaits you with touch control spicing up the formula, as well as the fact that it's a potentially bottomless well of content and possibilities. Now then, where is Little Big Planet 4, Sony? Come on, it's been years. Years. Number 10, Hotline Miami. Tell us, do you like hurting people while straining one out? Then allow us to introduce you to Hotline Miami, an effortlessly stylish top-down shooter that rewards patient because, let's be real here, is an absolute son of a bitch in terms of difficulty thanks to its one-hit kill mechanics and fast-as-hell pace. Like many indie games on this list of the best PS Vita games, Hotline Miami is irresistible because it's not only pick-up-and-play, but also impossible to put down once you get going. 
bolstered by a synthwave soundtrack that is the stuff of legend and a gloriously 80s aesthetic, this is one murder puzzler, no really that's what it is, that should be ticked off your list. Someone at Naughty Dog clearly loves Hotline Miami as it can be seen being played during The Last of Us Part 2 in a less than subtle nod to both games' themes. Number 9. Killzone Mercenary Unfairly overlooked by critics at launch for not moving the dial enough, Killzone Mercenary may lack the bombast of its PlayStation 3 brethren, but it's quite easily the best FPS game on the Vita. The controllers transfer well to the small screen and it makes inventive uses of the handheld's gimmicks to make something that feels as exciting as playing a shooter on your TV. The story is an oddity in the Killzone timeline, pitting you as a mercenary during key moments of the conflict with the Hellgast. Killzone Mercenary also has great multiplayer and you will surprisingly still be able to find some, admittedly pretty half-empty matches this far down the line. The sound of a confirmed kill is also worth the price of admission, that weird little jingle feeling as rewarding as opening a chest in Zelda. Oof, yeah, that's the good shit right there, that's the good shit. Number 8, Gravity Rush is another worthwhile game on the Vita that didn't find the audience it deserved, so much so that its sequel actually went on to become a PS4 exclusive. It's a shame because Gravity Rush arguably suits the Vita more than its bigger and more successful brother, allowing you to mess with gravity and kick some ass from the palm of your hand. An out and out wacky time, Gravity Rush sees you playing as a young girl aided by a cat made of galaxies, bear with us here, to stop the destruction of a mysterious world. Thanks to its gorgeous cell shading and unique gravity shifting mechanics, Gravity Rush really deserved to shift more copies than it did as a game that's closely associated with the underrated nature of the Vita as a whole. If you don't want to overpay a princely sum for a physical copy of this on the Vita, it was also remastered on the PS4 with the sequel to boot. Number 7, Tear Away. Another innovative game that had to leave its home to find the players the Vita couldn't provide, Tear Away is a charming platformer from the pioneers of the Little Big Planet franchise. Media Molecule certainly know how to create gorgeous and cute games with an undeniable charm, and Tearaway certainly fits that bill. Just like their marquee franchise, Media Molecule rewards the player for their experimentation and creativity in Tearaway, making the game feel like a toy box just begging to be played with. Tearaway even makes the touchscreen feel more than just a gimmick, which it often did on the Vita, asking players to peel back its paper world and dive right in. Unfolded on PS4 is a good way to experience the game as well, though Tearaway is just simply at home on the Vita. Number 6. Spelunky An indisputable indie classic, Spelunky is a lo-fi whale of a time that feels custom made for the Vita. Many modern games owe a debt to Spelunky, the work of mainly one guy, for reinvigorating and redefining the platform by introducing old school elements to a new school experience, which includes randomised levels and... um... eggplants? Spelunky just keeps on giving, offering new challenges and quirks that you weren't previously aware of the deeper into it you go. That's apt, because you spend your time in the game travelling deep underground on the hunt for treasure and crying with shameful remorse when you attack a shopkeeper and find that the rest of your game is utterly ruined. Seriously, don't mess with them. It's hard being a small business, alright? You can also check out its sequel, the funnily named Spelunky 2, on PS4. Number 5. Darkest Dungeon Ever found RPGs stressful, that you aren't quite powerful enough to be at boss, or that you don't have the items you need? You should probably approach Darkest Dungeon with some caution then, as it puts the end in friendship with alarming regularity, ridding you of your favourite party members over and over and over again. Anyone who's played XCOM will recognise the jarring permadeath in Darkest Dungeon, but when paired with the game's strict insanity mechanics, the task becomes even greater. Allow one of your party members to descend too deeply into darkness and they will be lost, which makes every action and tough decision in Darkest Dungeon feel far weightier. Is glory really worth death? Better yet, is it worth leaving your best soldier at a brothel to shake his trauma away? Truly, truly one of life's biggest dilemmas. Number 4. Uncharted Golden Abyss while it's true that Golden Abyss may try to use too many of the Vita's unique features all at once, the fact remains the same that it's the perfect pocket-sized adventure for Nathan Drake. It only minimally downsizes the scale of the Uncharted console adventures to create something that feels like a technical marvel. A lot of simple joy can be had from drawing the destination for Drake as he's climbing or swiping to leap across a gap. The controls are also tight and the combat just as fun as its big appears. The story is also great even if it takes a little while to really get going and the characters are a little fuzzier looking than they used to. Those little quibbles aside, don't overlook this underrated bit of gold in the franchise. Number 3. Velocity 2X 
an acclaimed but not wildly commercially successful hybrid of ship-based gameplay and side-scrolling, Velocity 2X might actually best be first discovered on the Vita. It's a game that you constantly dip in and out of, the experience constantly refreshing thanks to its inventive mechanics that never allow you to rest on one aspect of it for too long. The origins of Velocity 2X actually run pretty deep in the PlayStation brand, with a PlayStation Mini, hey remember those? Games by the name of Velocity. Since then, Future Lab have updated and refined the experience until they arrived at 2X, which is one of the smoothest and most downright beautiful games you're ever likely to play on a handheld. Check your PlayStation Store purchases on your Vita, it might have sneaked its way in there at some point just like it did for us. Number 2. Rogue Legacy Rogue Legacy is the epitome of portable gaming, an insanely addictive side-scroller that is as hard to put down as it is irreverent. You play as a knight storming a mysterious castle housing plenty of bad things for you to slay, and then you die. On your next run you play as a descendant of your previous character, who has their own powers and drawbacks. It's one of the best video games at making you love to hate it, in a good way, of course. This constantly maintains a feeling of freshness to Rogue Legacy, so that even if you're entering the castle for the 500th time, and you probably will, the wonders that await you never get any less intriguing. It's an understated and underrated gem that will have you utterly hooked, even when the cards are against you. In at number 1, of course, it's Persona 4 Golden. The aforementioned JRPG Vita game that will completely consume your being, Persona 4 Golden isn't something that you can play. You have to open it up and climb right inside. When a body turns up in an otherwise quiet town, you must discover the truth by diving into televisions and taking on enemies with your high school friends. Weird? You're damn right, and it's all the better for it. Persona is a franchise that's all about the creeping slow burn. You're going from being vaguely interested in its story and characters, and then suddenly being captivated and unable to shake it. Games like Persona 4 were made for duvet days. There's at least a hundred hours of content here, in a game that just grows the more you play it. So bear with its methodical pacing at the beginning of the game, and you will be trying to climb inside your 4K TV before you even realise what's happening. Just make sure you unplug your PlayStation TV first. Remember those? We remember those. We remember those always. Hello there, Kill Strain fans. It's me again, Jim Ryan. If you enjoyed this video on the little thing known as the Vite, be sure to do a like and then a subscribe. What was the Vita again? What did you put on it? Ridge Racer? Disney Infinite? What's that? If this video gets 200 likes, we will make another Vita. Definitely. Again, I'm Jim Ryan. Goodbye.